Hello, everybody. Welcome to Startup Jungle. I'm your host, Lo Silva. And today with me, I have Arjun Aurora. Did I say your name right, Arjun? You got it. Thanks. Nice. He is the founder of Retargeter, angel investor, startup advisor, and uh, very passionate about startups and uh, overall online marketing. So, um, Arjun, I kind of wanted to, thanks for coming on. I wanted to kind of uh, get started, I guess, with the simple stuff, the basics, and get a little bit uh, more info on you as well. How did you go from um, the beginning to the CEO and co-founder of Retargeter? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll give you a brief on my background. Uh, so I studied electrical engineering and computer science at UC Berkeley, so I have a bit of a technical background. Um, and then from there, went into the world of finance for a short while, so had some exposure to uh, you know, just the whole world of uh, kind of later stage in a, in a company's evolution where they're looking at M&A or large financing or an IPO, so had some exposure there. I uh, went over to Yahoo for a short while, uh, ended up running business development for Yahoo Real Estate, so, you know, uh, at the time, it was the actual largest online real estate portal uh, that existed. Uh, and, you know, over time, the folks, the good folks at Trulia and Willow, uh, you know, ended up kind of taking, taking that mantle. Um, but, uh, but it was a lot of fun, learned a lot, learned a lot about the Internet space, advertising, display, uh, business development, community, partnerships, uh, all kinds of fun stuff in that role. And that's where I had kind of my first exposure to, uh, to retargeting. So retargeting as a technology has been around for... Uh, over a decade now, actually, but was limited initially in scope to kind of large Fortune 500 companies, and uh, folks were spending $100,000 or more. So it was um, it was a good place to get some exposure, but of course it was very limited in scope, also by the sites or the networks on which the ads could appear. So we started uh, Retargeter with the goal of democratizing that technology, making it accessible to um, as close to everyone as we could at the time. So we brought it down from you know, hundred thousand or fifty thousand dollars a month down to five hundred dollars a month uh, in, in the ability to get started. So that was kind of the initial impetus and, and uh, where we got our start. Nice, nice. And overall, I I, I know you did get a uh, small round of funding, but overall, you you've completely bootstrapped it um, yeah. <laughs> to to a very successful a very successful company, right? It's in the uh, multiple multiple seven figures uh, a month. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, quite large. And yeah, we started off and uh, you know bootstrapped from a very, very small amount of money. And then just uh, last year in two thousand uh, fall end of two thousand thirteen, we raised a small round just from a, a whole gang of kind of notable angel investors, folks like uh, Naval Ravikant, the CEO of AngelList, um, uh, John Battelle, um, Aaron Battalion, the co-founder of Living Social. So you know, got a lot, lot of good folks uh, who are excited about the continued growth of the company. Just to Kind of help support us through the next phase of growth, but yeah, um, primarily we, you know, for four and a half years it was pure bootstrapping, and that has its own benefits and challenges, but uh, it was a lot of fun. So before we dive into some uh, some kind of more advanced retargeting stuff that I want to talk to you about, what yeah. do you think um, were some of the best tactics, just on that grind that you were bootstrapped wise, that yeah. helped you guys um, scale? Yeah, so I think the the I'd say the most important thing, hands down, is definitely the um, is setting the right culture and setting the right uh, vision for kind of where we were going and what we're, what's important. So I think, you know, as they often say, culture eats strategy for lunch, and I think that is even more important in a bootstrapped environment. Sometimes if you raise a lot of money, you can throw money at problems, but uh, in this case, everything had to be, you know, very, very tight. So we were very clear about what our values were, what we stood for. We literally put them on the wall. Um, in big kind of block letters, so um, you know something that that we were very passionate about. The other thing is it, is almost you know obsessive uh, about efficiency. So everything was you know are we doing this in the most efficient way possible? Is there a creative way to do this? Can we leverage technology to be more either you know creative or efficient about what we're doing? So we partnered with a lot of folks who were just early on in their startup trajectories, uh, folks like Relate IQ, uh, Recurly. Um, and other kind of tools like Asana that we were very, very early adopters of that really helped us be as efficient as possible as we were looking to scale and um, also helped in that we were early alpha and beta testers, so we got you know, a little bit of reduction in price by uh, being the guinea pig, so that often helps from a financial efficiency perspective as well. Yeah, Asana is an awesome tool. Yeah. Love that. I go between that and Trello all the time right. with right. different projects. Um, cool, man, cool. So let's talk a little bit. Let's... 
let's jump a little bit uh, forward, I guess, into retargeting and um, let's let's get started slow and then kind of ramp up. So retargeting, tell me who should be using retargeting. What are some good ideas for someone who's just getting started and wants to spend their first 500 on a retargeting campaign? How should you go about that? I know it can be a little bit overwhelming because right. people think it's just like, oh, I'm not even good at ads, now I'm doing retargeting, what do I do? Um, how, how do you? How would you best say to get started with that? Yeah, so I think the, the best way to get started is to just decide you know, the audience that you're looking to retarget. In many cases, that's the entire audience off your, off your entire site. That makes things much easier. So let's assume that kind of to get started. So once you know the audience that you're retargeting, let's say everybody that's visiting your website, the next important step is just figuring out, uh, well, what are the creatives that I want to show you know, this, these people? And so that typically looks like um, you know, 15 creatives. So the way we do it is three ads, one for each of five different ad sizes. So it really is kind of that simple. Once that's set and established, then it's as simple as putting the code on the site, uh, uploading your creatives, and then your campaign's kind of ready to rock. So I think the, the easiest way to get started is to decide the audience, get those creatives done, and then you know, we make it really easy to just turn, uh, turn it around, get that campaign up and going. And then over time, your know, account managers, or as you look at the reporting, you can continue to further optimize and enhance the campaign. But I think the easiest way to get started is decide the audience, upload the ads, and and get you know and get going. And there's a lot more nuance to it, but that's probably the the simplest way to get started. Yeah, yeah. I, I always tell people to essentially try to tell try to tell a story in their in their initial retargeting campaign. So let's yeah. say I I want to buy you know these apples from you. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure. I've never met you. I don't know if you got the best apples. So right. you know the the next email is or the, if if you're getting retargeted, the next thing is handling an objection, right? Yeah. And then handling another objection, and then potentially going a little bit deeper to one week. I know that you're not coming in. Maybe a reactivation, saying, "Hey, get right. these apples for twenty bucks off," you know, yeah. something like that. So being being a little bit strategic. I know a lot of people just jump in and toss it all because essentially you are going to recapture people and they are going to come in and you're you are going to make money I, you know I think that with retargeting it's either hit or miss there's no middle you're either going to do well or you're you're just not getting it right 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 so, um, and, and yeah and I think a lot of to, to that point I think a lot of it is around testing your creatives and really being uh, to to your point around testing different types of messaging as well and so one of the things that I assumed earlier was that you've defined your audience as the entire audience to your website but one of the points that you just brought up, which is which is important to highlight, is that if you decide to segment a certain portion of your site, um, and these folks happen to be folks that still need education, then a lot of it is objection handling and, and things like that. However, if you're doing a let's call it a shopping cart uh, abandonment retargeting campaign, then you're doing exactly as you described, and you're showing you know here's five dollars off, come back and complete your cart purchase. And so I think a lot of it is is figuring out who's your who's your audience, where are you targeting them from. Uh, so that you can have the creative actually match uh, the audience that you're retargeting. And the beauty of creating these segments is you can have different ads associated with different segments to handle different parts of the, uh, of the marketing funnel, so to speak. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of creative things you can do, uh, I think. And the key is that alignment between the audience and the creative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, have you found in just... You know, I'm, I'm sure you you have so much information from re retargeting from companies and different things, uh, different strategies of, of uh, strategic segmentation or strategic kind of ideas that that people are using that might be a little bit out of the box when uh, when setting up retargeting campaigns. Right. Uh, so yeah, I'll give a couple of examples. I think just the idea of segmentation that we were just chatting about is so important. Many people will just you know throw one code on the entire site or you know and and show the same ads to everybody. So I think that's probably you know, the number one thing I would say. The other thing that's interesting is actually, and this is a, a derivative of segmentation, but the premise of basically leveraging burn code intelligently. So a lot of folks don't actually burn, um, or yeah, sorry, the burn code is, is this idea that you actually stop showing ads to people once they've completed a certain action. And you, the way we say it is that you actually burn the cookie away so that they no longer see ads. So you're, mm -hmm. you're burning that, uh, the user from seeing ads going forward. And what the way we, we've actually thought about it and set up some interesting kind of multi-funnel uh, multi kind of segmented tranches <laughs> by which you basically burn a user and then you add them to another pixel and start to show them other ads. So people 
you know, not only are they moving through the funnel in on your website or through your uh, kind of product, but they're actually seeing the appropriate set of ads and not seeing the ads from the previous segment as they keep moving along. So I think this idea of kind of segment and re-cookie uh, based off of where they are in the marketing funnel is actually a pretty, uh, you know, relatively simple but but uh, incredibly impactful method uh, by which to retarget. And then, frankly, just simply using the burn code. So particularly in e-commerce, we hear a lot of, you know, frustration around, oh, well, I keep seeing ads for these shoes. I've already bought these shoes. Why am I still seeing ads? And I think, actually, it's a great opportunity. That's a big fail. Yeah, it's, it's a fail, right? But I think it's a great opportunity to actually show, okay, you bought some shoes. Let's show you some stocks. Or one of the things I've been hearing a lot about recently is you bought some shoes in this style. Let's show you other things that match the style. So it's kind of psychographic typing um, and style typing. Or frankly, uh, just the idea of pushing people to your social media. Uh, that's one of the things that a couple of our clients have done really well is say, great, thanks for buying this product. Now come like us on Facebook and share a discount code with your um, uh, with your friends and followers. And that's actually worked quite well as well. So I think it requires a little bit of a sophisticated marketing team that can spin up some creatives relatively quickly, but so, so powerful if you uh, spend a little bit of extra energy to uh, to do it right. Yeah, I mean, you, you could really just the potential of extra people that you can get. They're already there, right? So they're, they're saying, hey, I think something of you. It doesn't matter what it is. So right. I've already shown some interest. So you you have the opportunity, rather than trying to acquire more people, just take better care of the people that are kind of already interested in you. Exactly, exactly. And actually then, you know, leverage their friends and followers because, you know, as I always say, that you know, the best people to hire are friends of, of your employees is similar to, uh, you know, the same analogy holds here, which is, the best clients are friends of your current clients and people that they already know because you know that they're aligned from a, uh, from a community perspective. Yeah, um, I want to ask you too, um, what do you think of retargeting, with uh, kind of combining it with content marketing? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. So I think uh, particularly for uh, B2B software companies or things where there's a little bit of a longer sales cycle and there's more education to be done, um, we work with a, a great company called Flight, F-L-I-T-E, actually based here in San Francisco, that has some really cool ad units that actually can ingest uh, content directly from your blog post or from your Twitter stream um, and actually put those into ad units. And I think we've seen that uh, have a lot of success for folks that are you know, uh, doing a great job with their content marketing. It's a great way to kind of stay top of mind. Uh, even some more crazy kind of creative stuff we've done is actually put a uh, slide share uh, slide deck into a 300 by 250 ad unit and share that across the web. So it's a way that someone can actually literally thumb through a deck uh, in the ad unit um, as a means to get educated and obviously click through to get the, the bigger version. But it's typically enough to get, you know, at least pique someone's interest and uh, has often been, you know, a creative solution that has allowed those folks who are doing a lot of educating, you know, selling complicated, you know, uh, hardware, software, hybrid Hadoop systems or something like that where that education really matters. Uh, that that's worked really well. So that's the spectrum of kind of retargeting uh, with uh, with content that we've uh, seen out in the market. Yeah, Frankly, we are do more of it. There's there's a lot of scope for folks who can do that, right? Yeah, we we are we're actually about to implement a few things where um, anywhere from abandoned cart sequences that will take you back to depends on because we have a variety of courses. So let's say you fall off on a Twitter thing, um, right. rather than you know immediate coupon or anything, we're going to go content marketing yep. into uh, a series of things that are involving Twitter and stuff like that. If you haven't reached a certain time, then it'll burn and it'll show you like a discount and different, different you know, scenarios where like you're actually, I kind of, I, I just look at everything through like a conversational thing, like how can we keep moving with education and conversation right. rather than just showing you stuff and blasting you, you know what I mean? Because it's, you're, you're just going to, you're not maximizing the ability to to capture all these people when, when you're doing that. Yep, exactly. So um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, two things, well, three things, I guess, but let's let's talk a little bit about um, email retargeting. Yep. Yeah, so email retargeting is, uh, is kind of an incredibly powerful tool uh, to be able to re-engage folks who are opening your emails. So the basic uh, the underlying premise is with retargeting, you're placing code on the website. With email retargeting, you're placing the code into outbound HTML email. So it's kind of treating an email as a website, so to speak. So you're saying, okay, we're going to put the code there. And um, 
you know, it's a great way to be able to retarget people who are engaging with email. So maybe they're not coming to your website, but they're opening your email. And this is a great way to be able to retarget them. And then an interesting kind of corollary to that is this idea of CRM retargeting, which is also based off of emails. But it doesn't require someone to actually open the email address, uh, open the email. It just requires um, having someone's email address. And the way that that works is there's actually a host of companies that work on uh, what's called data onboarding. And they're able to take the email address, effectively find that user in an anonymous way as they're surfing around the web. When they log in somewhere using that email address, they can basically drop a cookie. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of different sites to support this. Uh, sites like Priceline, not, not that they're exactly doing this, but sites like Priceline or, you know, other places where you're logging in with your email address, uh, you know, they'll capture that, be able to drop a cookie, and um, then you'll be able to retarget that person uh, everywhere they go across the web. So between email retargeting where you are getting someone to open an email and CRM retargeting where you just have an email, uh, both of those tools are, are really powerful to be able to extend uh, just pure site-based retargeting. So uh, really, really, we've seen a lot of folks use it in very interesting ways. Yeah, yeah, that sounds that sounds like it could be used in some in some crazy, crazy ways. That's yeah. awesome. Um, what about video retargeting? I, I, I've seen a little bit of people, a few people do this um, properly on, on YouTube and things like that, but what uh, have you guys been seeing a lot of people move forward there, or is it not um, mass market yet, so to say? I would say it's probably not mass market yet. I think that one of the bigger challenges around uh, getting uh, access to inventory. So there's not as much video inventory available in an RTB uh, in a real-time bidded environment just yet. So a lot of the video is still bought, um, you know, picking up the phone or making a block of uh, purchases somewhere. And so it's a little bit of a different um, approach to buying video. Now there's certain companies and things that are changing that over time. I think Bungle's doing a great job in the mobile marketing space. Uh, Brightroll's doing a great job in the RTB web-based world. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of interesting stuff happening uh, in that space, but it's still relatively early. We have run some campaigns in the past for the EPA and for a bunch of folks for uh, video retargeting. It does perform very well. The challenge is that with display, you can maybe show, if you're being really aggressive, you can show even 30, 50 impressions to a unique user in a, in a month. Um, in, uh, with video retargeting, there just isn't as much supply yet, so you end up, it ends up being a handful of video impressions a month versus, um, you know, the potential tens of uh, ads you can show in, in a display capacity. So that's kind of what we've seen, but it is very powerful, works phenomenally well from a branding perspective, um, and surprisingly as well as from a DR perspective as well. Is, is that a little bit harder to track on a conversion, like through view, a conversion uh, view? No, it's actually, uh, interestingly enough, it's actually just akin to display advertising in the way that it can be tracked. So that actually makes it nice. The conversion events are treated similarly. The way the cookies are dropped in order to track both view-through and click-through conversions are done uh, the same way as display. So it actually, uh, from that perspective, is is uh, quite easy to, to track. So for, for, for people that uh, are just kind of getting started, can you explain the difference between uh, view-through and click-through conversions? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start with click-through because it's a little bit, uh, it's the more traditional, kind of easier one to understand. But a click-through conversion is someone shows up to your website, let's say you're selling shoes, uh, they leave the site, they're on CNN.com, they see an ad for the shoes, they click on that ad, and within, you know, 24 hours they make a purchase of those pair of shoes. Now that would be um, a click-through conversion, and it's based off the actual click that happened on the ad, and that's tracked all the way through to a conversion event. Now, the view-through conversion is a bit more nuanced. It's basically the ability to track a conversion based off of someone seeing an ad. So let's say in that uh, same example, someone goes to the shoe store, they're out on CNN, they see an ad for that shoe, but they decide not to click on it. And five minutes later, they're like, oh, yeah, I was going to buy those shoes. I just saw that ad. Let me punch in, you know, shoestore.com and, uh, and then go ahead and buy those shoes. And when that happens we're actually able to track that as a view-through conversion. So for every impression that's shown, we're logging that. We're basically dropping an impression cookie. And then that impression cookie is matched with the conversion event. So that's how we're able to track that. And uh, that allows us then to, to confidently know that, um, there, that an ad was seen by this user and it you know, likely had an impact in the purchasing decision. 
And yeah. what's interesting is that uh, the way advertisers tend to treat you through conversions is that they typically want to decide an attribution window. So if someone saw an ad, you know, in in January, they're probably not going to attribute that to the retargeting campaign. So we typically tend to see, you know, 30 days, in some cases 15 days, as that view through attribution window. Um, and that's how how uh, you know, more sophisticated advertisers tend to think about that. Cool, cool. Okay, um, now for uh, my, my last question kind of here is what what's going on with retargeted conversations? Yeah. I, saw it, I saw it on the blog and I wanted to talk a little bit about that, just kind of get an overview of it and see where, where that is headed because that right. just sounds so interesting. So uh, there's a great company, it's called Prime Loop. Um, it's, uh, the CEO's name is Thomas Knoll. Uh, he's been you know, uh, super successful, been in kind of the community and uh, PR kind of world for a long time. He was early at Seismic. He ran community uh, for Tony Shea at Zappos. And the problem that he kind of faced was that there was typically a lot of great comments and uh, great like blog posts or articles about companies written uh, elsewhere across the web, but those weren't really aggregated in one place for a business. So, you, you know, I think for Retargeter, we have probably hundreds of mentions um, everywhere across the web, but, you know, we still don't have one place that we can go to that very easily captures all of that. So started Prime Loop with this idea of, of kind of aggregating all those places across the web where your company is mentioned. And the, the beauty of that is now you can actually then share that. And it's, as we all know, it's much better when someone else, uh, you know, uh, tells people that you're awesome rather than you running around telling everyone you're awesome. So that's kind of the, you know, rule number one of marketing. Uh, so he's saying, look, here's, here's all these articles that are uh, mentioning your company in a positive light. Let's aggregate all of them. And rather than uh, share across social media and keep, you know, tweeting or posting, hey, we're awesome, we're awesome, we're awesome, rather to show then, and this is, you know, taking a page from uh, Gary Vaynerchuk as well, it's like let's highlight other people that think we're awesome. Let's continue to add value and, and showcase some things. So in that sharing of articles that are mentioning your company, uh, you know, if you're sending people off of your website, you're not actually able to retarget them. You can't retarget them because they're, they're not sitting on your website, and that's where you can typically drop a cookie. But what um, you know, Thomas and, and myself have all you know, kind of been chatting about is this idea that you can actually drop a cookie in a link to an article. So the way that happens is there's a redirect, and in that redirect, the cookie is dropped, and then you send people off to... Uh, you know, to the website, to the mention of the company. And so what that allows you to do is basically create an audience pool of all the people that are effectively talking about your company, the conversations that are happening about your company, and you can drop a cookie when someone clicks on that link to go read a bit more. And that um, is, is a really powerful concept. So if you're sharing a lot of content about, um, you know, things that are tangentially related to your business or that are directly related to business in which you're mentioned, you now have the ability to create an audience that you can then retarget. So let's say you're sharing a post about, you know, the uh, top uh, 10 uh, display companies, right, and retargeters mentioned in there. Now, we, we want to share that with our audience, um, and maybe that gets picked up and it starts to get retweeted and goes viral. Now, all of a sudden, that, that link that's... Uh, that's mentioning, you know, the top 10 display companies and has Retargeter mentioned in it, anyone who clicks on that is going to start to see ads for Retargeter everywhere across the web. And this is a great way to kind of capture the just the right audience that you're looking for, people who are interested in the topics in which uh, your company is mentioned. So that's the, the very quick rundown on that. And, um, uh, you know, there will be more kind of announcements around this soon, but that's the, uh, uh, the, the quick announcement around it. Yeah, that can create a whole new data set for, for marketers. Yeah, exactly. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's some fun stuff. We're really excited about that. I think it's a, a new way of thinking about retargeting, which uh, hopefully will uh, you know, continue to be successful. Yeah, any, uh, any other new news or, or updates or things that are, that are coming about uh, from retarget or, or just in the, uh, in the retargeting space in general? Yeah, I think uh, so. That that's uh, that's certainly the, the prime loop. Uh, the conversation retargeting is one that we're particularly excited about, and that was uh, you know announced just a couple weeks ago. So uh, that's kind of been top of mind recently. Um, other things outside of you know retargeting or retargeting in general, um, you know, just this idea of really leveraging uh, everything that's possible with the real time bidded environment. So rather than re-engaging people, now that there's more data out there. Um, and there's more inventory that exists and more ways to kind of nuance that, it's actually really um, 
It's become really powerful. So you can do things today like uh, target you know, women in New York between the ages of 25 and 35 who are reading an article about finance on their iPads between the hours of you know, uh, 11 p.m. and midnight who happen to make more than $200,000 a year. I mean, you can get down to that level of specificity across the entire web uh, with real-time bidding. So we've been really excited about that as well. And, and you know, right now the majority of our business you know, is still retargeting, but we're starting to see more and more of our clients start to leverage this new type of real-time bidded display. So um, given the data that exists out there, it's, it's so, so powerful. So we're excited to you know, educate more people about what, what's possible in the world of real-time bidded display. So that's, that's one thing. And then some of the other stuff that I'm just seeing, I, I call it on the, on the bleeding edge of the market, is uh, some interesting stuff that's happening in the mobile world, uh, you know, mobile video uh, advertising. I'm excited about I think the guys at Bungle are doing a great job. Uh, there's a company called Appington, which is building a uh, basically an, an ad network of sorts uh, for uh, 15 second audio clips. So they're doing this in uh, either so in, in either mobile games or on things like iHeartRadio or Pandora, but basically creating an ad exchange, so to speak, or DSP for 15 second uh, audio. Um, and I think that's a that's a really interesting kind of powerful idea. Uh, another company that I've seen that's uh, that's interesting is uh, called Partnered. Uh, which is looking to bridge the world of brands and agencies with startups. So they're kind of creating a marketplace to allow startups with interesting new kind of ad tech ideas to connect directly with brands and agencies, which are always looking for the hot new thing but have to sift through a lot of uh, just crazy new ideas. So this is a platform that allows uh, that to, to be made easy. So a yeah, lot, lot of interesting stuff. Um, just one more is a company called Buzzstarter and, and ShareRoot uh, in the Pinterest world, Buzzstarter in the kind of native advertising world. So a lot of, lot of cool companies, a lot of interesting stuff happening in the, uh, in the ad tech ecosystem these days. But, uh, yeah, we could spend a whole other conversation on that. Yeah, I, I was just <laughs> yeah. saying, we, we can just come back for a whole different episode of just tying in native ads with retargeting. Okay? Right. That's yeah. <laughs> another right. just nerd, nerdgasm waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. All right, Arjun. Well, uh, I don't want to keep you. Uh, I want to. We try to keep these to about 25 minutes or so. So, uh, just one last thing: if you sure. could um, give our audience uh, one or two tips on just succeeding right now and in, in anywhere, and we have people that are anywhere from just getting started to really just moving their uh, startup in a bootstrapped way. What What are some strategies? What's the one key takeaway that you would be able to give them to? kind of try to take action on? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, number one is just have a clear vision for where you're going. Number two, set the culture and the team uh, in a way that aligns with that vision and where you're heading and be very clear about that. And then I'd say number three is, is with regards to marketing specifically, be very clear about who you're trying to attract. I think this is one piece of advice that I heard uh, uh, from a, an awesome coach who's, you know, coached uh, folks at Dropbox and elsewhere, and he said this it was so simple but so powerful is that, the marketing messaging that you put out there, the creative that you put out there, um, is going to attract the people that are aligned with that message. So be very, very careful with the message that you put out there. It can uh, both you know, work in a very positive way, but it can also potentially attract you know, some of the wrong people that you don't want to deal with. So I think the clarity of messaging is so critical um, as you're getting kind of the... Uh, uh, getting your story out there in the world and, and having that clarity of messaging across all of your different channels is so, so important. So that's uh, something that I would uh, probably leave everyone with and uh, it was an important lesson that was, that was passed to me, so I'll, I'll share it with everyone else. Thanks, man. We appreciate it. All right, guys, uh, this has been another episode of Startup Jungle. If you guys want to get more information and download our Growth Tactics Guide to the right, uh, just enter email below and subscribe, and we'll be sending that out to you as well as uh, new updates for new episodes. Um, for myself and Arjun, we will see you on the next one. Thanks. See you later.